righty then. So we're going to do the reassembly of this um, old Waltham pocket watch. Uh, the patent for this watch, it says March 6, 1888. But I think this uh, watch, as I described earlier, was from 1892 or 90, some, somewhere in there. The 1890s, we'll say. So, so the first thing I need to do here is, is um, just take the cap jewel off of... Uh, off of the uh, base plate here and um, just oh look at that I got an old coffee anyway I just distracted myself take the cap jewel off and and see if I can uh, well I'll just clean that cap jewel here so I'll just get on top of this little problem here uh, and I do believe yeah I dressed my screwdrivers here the other day that's the proper term for it dressing of the screwdrivers I'll just take these little tiny miniature screws out first of all. It's 9 a.m. so I should be well rested. I shouldn't have any problems working today because I'm well rested even though my knee hurts and I had a crappy sleep last night. If you can give me any advice on how to deal with a bad knee when you're sleeping, just cut it off or take a lot of drugs. Anyway, sore as heck. I don't know why. I think it has to do with age. But, so be it. Bad knee. But I can't, shouldn't be complaining. There's people with bigger problems than, than a bad knee. So, first thing I look for when I do this is, there's, is there a mark here to allow me to line this up again? And the only thing I can see is this little groove right here, which might be useful. But I'll, I'll put a mark on this side just so I can remember which, uh, which side this goes on. It's pretty common to see these capsules with a scored mark on one side because it helps uh, the watchmaker identify the, where the heck this thing needs to go. So this seems to be moving, which is always good. And I just want to make sure I walk it out ever so carefully. And this is the cap for this watch. Uh, come on. Usually it just comes out, but these, since it's from the 1800s, who knows? There we go. So that's out. And I'm looking at the surface of the other jewel. Man, it's clean as heck. So that's clean as heck. And if I just look at the glare, this, this is what you do. And there's just a little tiny bit of stuff on the top of this cap jewel and setting. So take a piece of... Um, of pegwood and what I do here is just rub that rub the uh, capsule and that usually gets rid of the cleans it right up actually so almost better than throwing it in lighter fluid and farting around with it so this cleans that surface nicely and remember this has gone through the pearl watch cleaning machine as well so it's probably been agitated in there as well and then I look at it again at an angle and see whether that's cleaned or not. And if I show it to you, see if I can show you the result here. I'm not sure if you'll see this or not, but here we go. There it is there. And I'm just going to move it around and see if I can get a light, a lit angle. There's a lit, there we go. It's there, right there. See how that shines like that? And you really, you can see no real filament there. Um, there's a little leftover that actually that little round circle you just saw was the other side of the jewel so so that is Minto Conditiono and I actually looked at the other side of this jewel as well and it looked pretty darn good so and the jewel holes look good on this watch as well which is strange because it's super old now it might have not been used for like a jillion years so so that's that's the other thing that might have happened is the watch was was um, it's old, but it doesn't have any usage, so it just sat there. So yeah, I got to oil this capsule now, and I grab my favorite oiler here. Um, I've got three oilers, but this one seems to work the best. So just uh, jab, jab, jab. And I use the uh, 9010 on this, so just take a little bit out here. And again, 
the way you do this is you oil the cap, not the jewel. So I gotta take the cap here and turn it around like that. And then you put some oil on it. Like so. So now there's a little ball of oil on that jewel. Again, uh, just for you you guys' sake, uh, you can't really see the ball of oil, but there's a little tiny ball of oil on that jewel. And now I can put this back in place and I look where the mark was on this and I can see the mark. So it has to go down like this. And kind of like this. The tweezers do not want to let it go. So you got that situation, just ride your finger up the tweezers and it'll separate the tweezers. So there we go. Now that's definitely not lined up. I need to nudge it. Like that. It's perfect there. And then take my peg wood and press down on this. I think this is a perfect fit. And there, as you see, it just slid right into position there, which is perfect again. And then um, I've got the two screws here. I gotta tell you, my stupid knee is hurting because I'm sitting down and uh, I'm at a probably a crappy angle for doing watch work because uh, the uh, knee is definitely starting to hurt. It's just one side of my knee, the inside of my knee has a sharp pain occasionally, so I think I may have a torn meniscus. Of course, it's affecting my ability to be accurate in putting these screws back. Let me see here. I'm going to take my time with this watch. It's an old watch, and I'm going to make sure that I do a really good job for the gentleman who asked me to get this thing going again. There we go. And tighten that up. You don't have to tighten it like it's the uh, the guy wire going across the uh, Niagara Falls. Just tighten it just a bit. Sort of snug I guess the term is how I use. So that uh, it's in there nice and snug. It definitely takes me a little longer to do these watches when I'm under video because and chatting away. But I hear people are enjoying it, so I'm just going to continue doing it. There we go. I got rid of a lot of this corrosion. I told my wife about it, and she says, It's not mold, you idiot. It's corrosion. And she talked about the metals uh, corroding. And I was like, Yeah, you know what? You're right. It's not mold. I think while I'm on this side of the watch, um, I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to oil a little bit more of it here, like inside here. So I got to put this together. And usually when I put this together, it's a bit tricky uh, because the um, let's put some oil in here. It's a bit tricky only because the um, every one of these setting movements, or setting mechanisms are, are unique different or whatever so it makes it a little bit tricky to put this together because of that um, and I'm putting some very thick oil here that's I'll have to get a number for you but that oil there so this is a 9150 I think 9150 is that right or is that Eddie Van Halen's amplifier and a little bit of oil on the inside here, and a little bit of oil on the surface. And I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the inside of the hole for the center wheel, too. This will prevent further corrosion of this as well, which is nice. I think the old dudes years ago just used to spill it in oil. Hope for the best. And I'll oil these later from the other side. So I think we're good on this side. So I can commence to putting this thing back together. 
and putting this back together I got to figure out what goes where that's the hardest part so I was trying to remember this mechanism here and I think this this little plate with the screw on it goes over here like that or actually it goes on the other side I, I think yeah it goes on the other side and then this little device here it screws into this here so and this goes kind of like this I believe on this side so it's clean side up oh, I'm looking where the entry hole is on the side and <clears throat> anyway I think it's something like that because there's an entry hole right here so it would go like this and I can see the the, the chamfer whatever you want to call it lining up with the mainspring barrel here so it's just the edge of that lines up with the mainspring barrel so I've got to turn it around and I may need two hands and may have to do this off camera because you've got to hold it in with one side while you screw it in or just use some Rotico it's man's best friend so if I can take some Rotico out and I'm just going to go back to my photos here to see what this thing looks like from this side and hang on a sec yeah so that's kind of what it looks like from this side you can't see this but I've got a photo that shows how it goes together so I can look at that and say okay stick it in like that flip it around put some Rotico in the top to hold it in place and then and then I can uh, perhaps uh, put it in I know that the stem goes through this hole right here so that would mean if the stem goes through here it has to go either this way or the other way so oh it's this way actually so the stem goes through there and I can see that the um, the mainspring barrel is on this side so if I just put it down like this for now did that go in or did I screw that up I need to stick down and as I was doing this I had a sharp pain in my knee man oh man I'm really getting sick of this knee problem sick and sick of this knee problem yeah, I can see from this side it's not aligned properly. I've got to pick it up and align it and then come back and with the perfectly aligned part. And then I can put the plate back on. Yeah, so let me get back out here and I'll align this part. As you can see, you've got to use two hands to do that. Alright, that's the uh, top half kind of fit in there, but now I've got to screw the bottom part on. So, the, again, the best way to do that is to just smear on some Rotica over the top, nice and steady like that, so this doesn't move. And now I can see that plate on this side here, and I can take this plate with screw, with the screw, and just put that on top like this and that should fall right in let me look at this again make sure I get the right side up doesn't seem like it matters oh yeah it does there's a little chamfer as they call on the it's beveled on the inside so I need to make sure that that bevel is facing the screw side so if you look at that part here see that very small bevel. That bevel would be on the top. So when you put this together, you got to make sure that's also on the top. So, so I'm just going to place this in here like that. And the screw, it, the hole, I don't know, doesn't look su doesn't look super aligned right now. But I think once I start screwing it in, it might align itself. So I'm gonna. Just put this in the hole for now like that and just start turning that screw and see if it grabs the threads on the other side and the lines need some peg wood need some peg wood no, you're not seeing anything here I move over just a bit here so I just drop that screw in there and I 
I may again have to pick this up with two hands and shimmy it around to see if it's going to stay in place. And pick the right size screwdriver here. I don't know if this one is or not. I think I got a grip on something there. Let me just remove this here. And see if that's gripped it. Yeah, it has. So that's good. You can see the edges there. It's, it's kind of gripped that piece right there. And this is flat right here. So, and um, <clears throat> I know it was very tricky to put all this together. I think I had to unscrew this to take out the uh, other parts. I'm hoping I don't have to unscrew it again, but so be it if I have to. I'll just uh, tighten this up now. And I think I need to move the camera over just a bit so I can see what I'm doing, plus have some room to get my screwdrivers in there and stuff. There, that's in pretty tight. We look at that from all angles. Make sure I got that in nicely. And it is. It is. And while I've got this available, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the inside of that. Like so. And that'll pass that around as the stem goes through there. So that's that part there. Which is... Uh, one of the harder parts actually to reassembling this thing so it's not absolutely an easy thing to reassemble now I just want to lay the uh, the crown and ratchets and stuff down so I can see where they go and how they go and everything else so so this goes in here but I've got to have this on the crown and the uh, on this here itself before I put that on so I'm going to figure out how this goes because I think this actually goes on the outside of that right so I think this goes like this on the outside sort of like so again I could I'm gonna have to take the camera off and and work on this because these are it's very hard to put this back together when you're trying to film and stuff but it would go on like this I believe I think it was awkward like that. There, like this, and it goes all the way to the end. Of course, this will fall off the second I put this out, right? So, and well, while I have it out again, put a little bit of oil on it because I want this to be able to slide back and forth. It just wants to fall out, that's all. And then this wheel here goes on the end. So this here goes on the end the other way. So it goes like this on the end. So it shouldn't be a... I'm going to use a piece of Rodico here to grab it. And just slide that on. And see if I can lay the whole thing down. Now, because it's square, it's going to have a little bit of a tricky time aligning. Oh, I got it. So there it is there. And then this whole thing feeds in like this, which is going to be the tricky part because I've screwed this in already, so it's got to come in at an angle. And I'm not sure if I can just scoot it in at an angle or whether I have to take this out again to do that. Because as you can see, you see... No, maybe uh, it's so close. I may have to loosen it to get that out because as you can see, this, this gear has got to pass by this plate. Let me see how close it is here. Oh, it's so freaking close. Might just be able to snug it in. No, yes, no, maybe. Snug. 
snudge and snug. Look at the other side and see what's causing it to not go in. It's the bottom part. So, so I think I need to loosen this. Loosen the other side just a bit to get this in. Because I remember when I had I took it apart. Um, so I'm going to just put some Rodico right over the top of this here. And I remember when I took it apart, this thing here was, was uh, I actually had to loosen it to get that stem out. So it's the opposite now. So take it like this. And I think if I loosen this just a bit, it's going to allow that, uh, that piece to go inside. So let me just grab that screw I had before and loosen this up just a bit. Like that. And allow should allow me to rock it a, a bit. Uh, let me think here. I'm trying to rock it up while I push this in. You take advantage of this little hole on the top here. Maybe that's what it's for. not allowing me to do that so never force the parts as they say never force the parts so let me just remove this or unscrew it a bit more it's probably almost completely unscrewed right now yeah see I just lost it from the top so now it'll come in it'll go in no problem because I've taken it out of position basically so I just need to push it push up on that back, back plate. Yeah, sure everything's friggin falling apart on me here. I just need to push up on that back plate here. Push up on this to get that stem in. So I just pushed up on it and now of course it's out of place. And push back on it, try to get it back in place. Come on. Get back in there. Man, oh man. I need to fiddle with it, I guess. Got time to fiddle. Fart with it from the other side and just keep hitting the camera as I do it. So. Oh, there we go. That's back in place now. So, given that I got it back in place, I'm going to put another piece of Rodico on the top of that too. Because I don't want it to go anywhere. This is a pain in the ass, folks. A pain in the ass. These old movements. That's why usually it costs more to actually get a watch um, serviced when it's, when it's um, from the 1800s. Because... It just doesn't, they're not built for maintainability, I think. I think they were built to use and you shoot somebody like a cowboy and then throw the watch out. Alright, so that's in like that. I'm holding it just so I can get the right angles here. Tip that in, and then I'm probably going to hit the camera here, but I think I got it. Let me just take this piece off here, this piece of Rodico off. I'll leave the other one on for a second to see if this thing is flat. Yeah, it's flat. So I'm going to put that in the movement holder and then tighten that screw down. I lost part of my movement holder as you can see, but because it's such a great movement holder it just slides back in like that. Alright, I knew that was going to be a pain in the ass when I started doing this work. I think this is a frustrating Saturday morning, so I'm going to be able to swear a bit. Instead of saying pain in the butt. And I think I'll just re I'll adjust my camera here to give me some more room underneath the movement. Alright, 
that's in good and this is in good now I can take the Rodico off this side and commence to put the rest of this stuff together I'll just uh, move it like that and then I'll work on the um, on the rest of the spring stuff so that's how the spring goes together you can see how corroded that was pretty bad so I've cleaned up all that crap that was on it this here which is um, corrosion it's not mold I said mold earlier because I maybe I was being a bit dramatic <laughs> my wife corrected me said no that's corrosion so it's like when you have a nickel roof or sorry a copper roof and you see the copper corroding so anyway you got to put that back together so I got a picture of it anyway and uh, I think the first thing I'll put together uh, is the spring part which would be which would be this right here so we gotta get rid of the Rodico and not pull the thing back up as I'm doing it because that would just piss me off and while it's exposed while it's exposed a little bit of oil little bit of oil while it's exposed put some in here and that'll pass around to itself and then right all the friction points so I'm looking at just putting some right here where there's going to be friction as well and then right inside of here and that's where the spring goes in I just need to put one little bit in there because when it moves around it'll spread the oil which is great that's how this oil works you don't have to put it everywhere so so there I do say so a lot so 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 now this this spring here the one I was kind of worried about breaking and stuff it goes down it's going down it goes down like this like this and then inside of this here like that so basically it's like this Let's see if that's yeah that's all in place just like that so I'm gonna um, it goes like this just like that amazing and now I put the screw back in but I'm gonna have to hold this down with my peg wood because I know that this thing will fly if I don't so I believe that's how it goes in I can't lay the screw down like that it'll just fall off the edge so turn it sideways a bit like that and then Hold my breath. Hold that spring down. I think my uh, screwdriver is magnetized just a bit. You got to be super patient to do this stuff. I think I need a one screwdriver size less which is the black one and look at the tips here yeah this is the one I uh, I treated earlier what's the word I used again that's what I'm doing I get my fingers out of the way just so you can see what I'm up to right camera work is terrible okay, I'm gonna just before I tighten this down I'm gonna make sure that this is on the correct side of this so and I think it is yeah that is because the other device has to go in so that this can move out of the way and that would be this here and this is edging towards this way like that like that and um, on the other side of that screw this goes in like this so I'm looking at the screw here and, and this here and I just want to take one of my my little device there and get rid of some of the rust on that so I'll be back in a second 
I mentioned this earlier, but the Bergeron 6240, that's the Bergeron 6240. And yeah, it's got a small brush on the end, and that pretty much will get rid of anything. So, and so when I do this, I can take a piece of watch paper. Let me see if I can find a piece of watch paper here. I'm not going to turn the camera off, but my friggin' knee still hurts, though. And that's just to collect the, uh, the dust from the corrosion when I work on this. And I think I will try to hold that maybe with Rodico or my tweezers, but I'll just put this on like this, like that. And then I want to look at where, the, where I think the corrosion is. And it's on the end right there, so I may want to hold that with... Uh, Oh, this is working with a pin vise, maybe so. You gotta get yourself a bunch of really good pin vices because they're priceless. This is a pretty big pin vise for holding this, uh, probably maybe an overkill. Uh, and this, this is a uh, sure whether you call these pin vices or not, but, but you can put the part right in the, the end. Try not to over squeeze it because it's threaded. But that, you just put that in the end like that, and that will hold that in place. Nicely, so I just have to hold it up. I'm holding it straight up right now, like that, so I can tighten this vise down on this part. There, I've got it, I got it gripped right now, so there it is there. And now I can um, basically work on the corrosion on that part without having to worry about it shaking loose. I don't want to grab it too hard though, so if it comes out I'll just reset it. So that just gets rid of the rust on the end here. And then after I've done this I will plunge it in Rodico to get rid of any uh, leftover stuff here. Blow it off and then plunge it in Rodico. And try to get on the inside of this as well. Just make sure all of it's gone. That looks pretty good right there. So there you go. Not bad. And uh, you never want to blow on it because there's moisture in your. So use one of these and just. Take it away from your other parts because you're going to end up, all the parts are going to end up flying around. So that's something you learn when you start watchmaking is that you spend a lot of time on the carpet looking for parts, carpet parts. Move this out of the way. You can see there was some stuff left over there. Um, but I also want to put that part down. I also want to do this part just a little bit, and that's flat, so I can't use this. Uh, pin vise or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to hold this down with some Rodico. On this end that is not a problem. Like there. Just like that. And then get in here. There's just one little piece right there. One little area that I want to get at. And move that around here. I'm wearing out the watch paper too. That's good there. Look at it from the other side. Oh yeah, that's rust central. Now the cleaning machine won't take that off. So if you look at that, see all that corrosion? So you want to get rid of that corrosion. So you don't want that to remain. So I'm going to turn this around again and, and work on this side. And I'll be right back. So I've decided to put this on the block while I'm working on it because it seems like it's a, a good idea. So I could put it on a, uh, could put it on a bigger thing, but what the heck, I think this block will do. And that way I can uh, work on this without it moving around too much. It's gonna move around a bit, I think, because if the, uh, I got the rod, I'm holding it with the Rodico, but this at least lets me grip on it. And the watch paper was kind of crumbling under its, under the pressure, so. 
Yeah, that's pretty good there. So I'm going to turn this around a bit and grab the end there and put a little bit of fingernail pressure on that and then start doing it on this side. That still looks a bit dark, but it's, the corrosion is fundamentally gone. Fundamentally. That's pretty good there. And then Rodico, I may have to throw that piece of Rodico out because it's uh, it's looking pretty pretty tethered, tethered, smothered, tethered. Pretty tethered. There, and you can see the difference. Now I could try to get that down even more, but it's it's when I sh look at it, it's just the pitting that makes it look dark. So, so that's what it looks like now. See how that corrosion is fundamentally gone. So that's good. And I'll be putting a bit of oil on that as well, and that'll help prevent it from corroding any further. But just let me get a bit, a little blob of oil on that because it's going to be scraping on the bottom anyway. So. Oil that just a bit. The stupid knee hurts, man. Wine, wine, wine. It's watchmaking under pain. Under duress. Not dress. Duress. Yeah, it looks pretty good there. And this goes down, move this block out of the way, fold up my watch paper and then get rid of it. And uh, this goes down like this, like this here, like this. This goes down, going down. Get that out of the way. I heard the other day that meat meatloaf has passed away, which is like sad, but... Um, told my dad that meatloaf was cooked. He actually laughed. He thought it was pretty funny. He knew who meatloaf was. He was 74 years old and basically did the bat of the hell stuff. And it was actually, in the t at the time, it was like brilliant. Brilliant music. I really liked it when I was a kid. Listening to the bat of the hell. So this has to go kind of all the way in here. And the spring is to go back the way it is, so that it's sprung. And I'll make sure I don't break anything. And then the screw, the screw goes in like this. Oh yeah, this is going to be fun to do, man. The screw is super tall, so to put it in, I'm going to have to hold it in place like this and get a screwdriver on, into it on the top and see if it'll turn. Yeah, it's turning. So you see how I did that? I held that with the tweezers on one side and then screw it on the other side. like that and then does this move? Again I gotta look at the photo so I don't do anything stupid. Well that looks about right. It looks like that, right? So it's going around that screw and touching the top of that spring and the spring is pushing upward. So, I think that's right, but I'm not sure whether I have to loosen this just a bit because it doesn't seem to want to move at all. I'm just going to I'm just going to loosen this just a tad here and see if I can get some movement on this. Going to move this out of the way. There we go. All right. There we go.
Now that's straight down, so theoretically when I push this, when I push the crown into this, what's that going to do? I'm not sure how that works. Because this, this little lever right here goes into this slot here. So once again, i got to clean the rust off the end of this here, but I don't need to, uh, I just need some paper because I'm going to hold it while I'm cleaning it and not worry about, uh, worry about anything. But again, when you put that in a cleaning machine, that's gonna, not going to clean the rust off of it. It's just there, the corrosion off of it. It's just going to, it's just going to clean whatever dirt is there, but like the old oil and the dirt, but, but uh, this little Bergeron brush is just amazing. It's fiberglass on the end, so it's little strands of fiberglass, so. I don't recommend you breathe a lot. If I was really smart, I'd put a mask on, but. Fiberglass is heavier than air, so it's falling down. It's pretty good there. I'm just going to, while I'm here, just do the length of the crown just to make sure there isn't anything here as well. Or the stem. I should say. I could take that downstairs and actually run that in the polishing machine for a few seconds. Doing this by hand, by hand. I've got a piece of 600 grit sandpaper, wet dry sandpaper. So I'm going to be taking the barrel here and just rolling it in the sandpaper to get rid of some of that top layer stuff. Let's see if I can just do this, roll that, rolling, rolling, rolling. And that should get rid of the majority of anything that's squeezing that. So just grip it and then just turn it like this. And that's going to get rid of all kinds of crap. I use this uh, 600 grit too to clean tools. So if I'm working on a uh, lathe, like cleaning a lathe, I have some videos on how to clean a lathe, by the way. But if I'm cleaning my lathe and oiling it up, um, I'll use this sandpaper to get rid of some ma the major stuff, right? But that, uh, what I showed you earlier, that fiberglass Bergeron tool is like priceless. So. There we go, that's done. And I just want to roll that in Rodico to pick up anything that's there that I don't want to be there, right? Like that and like that, there we go. And again, I got millions of watch paper, but I just very carefully fold that over because I don't want to pop it because if I pop it, all of that fiberglass goes into the air, which I don't want to go into the air, so. Last thing I need is fiberglass in my lungs. I'm sure there's all kinds of other crap in my lungs for years of breathing stuff. Because I'm not 20 anymore, so I've, I was exposed to stuff when I was younger because no one gave a shit back then. They just dunk your hands in kerosene and away you go. Or I remember using naphtha to clean guns when I was in the army. So, so there's that here like this and like this. and. You don't really have to put this together right away because you're going to be unscrewing it later. And I just want to make sure that that's in good order. You're going to be unscrewing that later anyway. And you're going to be pushing that in and then unscrewing, loosening up this jobby doohickey, the screw. You loosen that up and that allows you to put this in. 
because it will go into the barrel or it will go into the setting mechanism like this and then and you'll just loosen this and that should allow you to put it in place because it'll slide by here right that's the theory anyway yeah that, that'll work so I'll tighten that up for now so it doesn't cause issues but once that's loose then hopefully this mechanism I'll test it after but this mechanism going back and forth will work perfectly so so that's that that's that setting crap all right I did some more work on this uh, base of the plate of the movement here on this side here for to get rid of some of that more of that corrosion and I did some work on the inside here to get rid of the corrosion from that side and basically I can do a little tiny bit more work right here although I'm not too concerned about this stuff here but it's well hidden underneath the movement so looks like it's pretty dramatic but it's not that bad at all it's again hidden underneath the plates going right down to the base again Just trying to get rid of that piece right there and um, this fiberglass works so well from the jewels so I don't get anything near the jewels. Alright, that's good enough. I shouldn't say good enough, it's good. blow out any leftover stuff and then just tap it with Rodico to make sure you got everything. Man's best friend. Yeah, that should do there. Just gonna tap this in here too. Here. That's not too bad there. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty darn good. That had a lot of rust on it man. It looked uh, pretty crappy when I took it apart. Crappy, crappy, crappy. Not sure if I had a picture of it taken apart, but I should see if I had a picture. I should see. Well, basically, you can see a lot of the corrosion here in this shot, right? All the crap that's there and the mess of the corrosion, even around this area here. So I've removed all of that. So that looks pretty good now. Now I've got to start putting the wheels back in, I think. Um, I may have to wind up that mainspring into the barrel first before I do the rest, so let's get on with that. Now if you recall, that's what this looked like here. Just get that picture back here. That's what that looked like here. It got some dust and crap and everything else on it, right? So it looked pretty shitty. And then I worked on that for quite a while, and I got it looking like this, which is actually not too shabby, right? Now you see those little dots of corrosion? I've got to get rid of those too. So I'll be right at that now with my super duper brush. And I'm just going to keep working at this, and I'll be right back after I've gone through all of that. So basically working each one of these little circles of corrosion to try to get rid of the main part of that corrosion so it's gone and then my evil plan here is to use that 600 grit sandpaper just to smoothen this out and see how that works but it'll be a lot better than what it was I'll tell you that plus operationally you don't have all that corrosion to deal with So 
as you can see, it looks a lot better from a corrosion perspective. And now I'm going to see if I can, uh, again, I'm getting rid of all of this watch paper again. And I'm going to take a piece of, a giant, a giant piece of this sandpaper and see if I can work it to get, to get that plate looking better. So I think I've put a little bit of elbow, elbow grease in here and I think this uh, brass plate looks a whole lot better. Um, and I may go downstairs and see if I can polish this a bit too. Alright, so I tacked it with my um, polishing machine. And of course, when you use a polisher, you're using a polishing cream. And of course, the cream gets inside the little grooves in the holes. So you got to get rid of that with the back of a, uh, another use for a back of a piece of uh, pegwood. So it doesn't scratch the, uh, the plate as you're trying to remove it. Right, so it's just leftover polish that's in there. And so you want to make sure that there's no polish left in the jewel holes as well. So have a look at those and because you could probably polish this first and clean it or then clean it and then polish it. You, got, you should get rid of the dirt first before you attack it with polishing it. So I'm just going to meticulously get rid of this stuff here and then I can use a cloth to uh, just rub some of that stuff out and uh, just get a cloth in here like this and then and then work it with your thumb and it should clean up nicely. Just looking at it here and making sure I've got it's fairly clean. Yeah, so it's cleaning up nicely. Just rub that down. Rub it down. I think I will go down after and just use a white, just to final polish, use a white uh, buffer to do this. Because it was much better with the, uh, the toothpick removed it, but it left little tiny rails, which I don't like. Pretty retentive. If you haven't figured that out yet, if I use this here cloth and I just go like that, that works really well. But I still need to put a white, uh, very clear buffer on there and, and just clean up the edges here. Especially where that serial number is. And I did along the edges too, but although I didn't really need to, but I did them. Because this watch has a, it has a thingamajabi, it has a uh, dust, dust cover. So that's a heck of a lot better. I just need to, uh, get rid of some of those scratch marks and I can do that with a, a clear uh, buffing uh, device. So a little bit of elbow grease and now you can see the results. So I'll have to rub it down a little bit but a lot better than it was. You can still see little pieces of stuff here so I just have to shine that up. And uh, That'll be done. Done, done, done. Yeah. That looks pretty darn good. I do say so myself. So triple buffed. Triple buffed. And there. That's not too bad. It's a good looking plate. Got all the stuff off of it. And it looks pretty good. I think I can probably even get it even shinier. Looks like a Rolex. And now in this case here it's the outside outside rims that you're worried about because it's gonna the other ratchet wheel and other things are gonna be inside those positions. So you should be fine. So now we can start assembling the wheels. Oh, I gotta do that mainspring barrel first. So you want to roll the uh, gears of the mainspring barrel on Rodico just to catch anything that might be might be on there. And this is one of those pain in the butt barrels, by the way. And it just, uh, just have to look at the teeth here, make sure I'm clean everywhere. Yeah, we're good. And you wind the barrel into here, 
um, and then uh, and then uh, it kind of floats you got to kind of stick that arbor on and get it to snap in so it's a little tricky so this mainspring goes clockwise so I can get clockwise winders out so I got myself a set of mainspring wine Bergeron's mainspring winders from a local gentleman and they're actually right-handed so which means they'll only wind one way I didn't know that but that's fine um, so I think the same principle uh, comes to play here where I have to make sure it fits in the barrel right so I have never used these before but here is the barrel here that you'd be pushing it into right so if the these winders fit in the barrel we're good that one doesn't fit I'm going to just put this one back. I cleaned all these up, but they are right-handed. I didn't know there was a right-handed and a left-handed, but there is. And all it has to do with is that little, the hook on the inside being right-handed. So that's too small. This is going to be Goldilocks again. I think. So I'll grab another one here. This one is going to be just right. I know it. Look at that, just right. So, so now the trick is, this is clockwise, it's going like that, which means the mainspring has to go into the barrel like that, clockwise, not counterclockwise, clockwise, which means that I've got to wind it on like, well it's going to go into the barrel, so this will be like that, right? which means this will be like this, which means I'll be turning this like this. So, so I'm going to see if I can figure this out. Um, so the first thing I do is grab this device here. Try to grab it. Oh, Jesus. All right, it's acting up. Get rid of the box because I know I'll get it in the way and hit something with it. So box is gone. And then I put the winder in like this into the uh, into this little groove, and then tighten it. Now it's tight, and there we go. Now again, it's got to go into the barrel, pop into the barrel like that, which means I've got to start it on the winder like this. Now I look at my winder really closely to make sure the hook is on the right side, the correct side, right? Again, never used these before, so we'll see what happens. So there's the hook. I can see the hook. And yeah, this is definitely right-handed. And then I take this and where the groove is and put some of the spring inside. Not all of it, some of it. So I think um, maybe if I turn this, it'll find its slot here. All right, where is it? I need to basically have some of that thing inside. So if I just push that in with a screwdriver peg wood, never use a screwdriver, you'll, you'll damage stuff. So if I push the edge in like this with peg wood, am I going to find it, find the groove? There we go. So that's in now. And now I have to wind it in. So I just do this and wind it in. This looks like it's a whole lot easier than my other spring winder. Although I, it, I have to use it only on right hand, right hand watch springs, which is going to be interesting because I know there's a lot of left hand ones that are out there. I think most of them are left hand. There we go. So that's that's almost all the way in. Now I know I can bring it up to this point here and then loosen it up because I want to be able to hook it onto the uh, the barrel. Uh, and I think that I've got to take it out this way, right? So you just back it out and it just comes out. If you do that. So the hook is there. I've got these well oiled and I I tried to clean the rust off as much as I could, but it's grabbing some from the inside of this, so from the inside of this main part here. So that's there. And now I should be able to just throw this in the barrel. There's the hook for this. And if I do this, is it going to hook? 
yeah, there it is hooked on. So I just I just found the hook for it and just hooked it on on the outside. Look at it really closely. Yeah, it's hooked. And then I just have to push this into the barrel, like though, like so. And there we go. Man, that was easy. So there it's pushed in into the barrel and it's also hooked because I can see the hook here. And now this is a floating barrel so uh, first thing I want to do though is put the tool away again. So just undo this, pull it out. Um, I'm gonna just hit this with a little bit of, of stuff here. I don't like the uh, there see now it's all gone that what I thought was corrosion but I think it's just on the inside of here which means I got to get a towel in there or something to get rid of that so but for now I'll just push it back in there it is there and put that back in the box box like this in the box and this goes in the box so these are right-handed so now it's gonna cause me to want to get left-handed ones now because I like them they're easy as heck to use there we go and they're Bergeron which means they're high quality, which I like. I like quality. And now this jobby doohickey, now the barrel's got to go in here and line up properly, right? So that's the arbor there, and then there's a hook on the arbor. So, and you can see the hook right here on the arbor. So I want to sort of back, find out, align that, and then tuck that in. Not like that. <laughs> so align that and tuck it in. Uh, and they're a bit of a pain in the butt, these ones, but whatever, right? They're old. So I attack, attack it from one side and then try to push it into, the, into position, right? To allow that spring to go into position. So, and I want this to, to hook as well, right? So I, it's got a hook or I got a bigger problem, right? So, so now it's, I've got it kind of resting there but it still has to get past that position so and I, and I can't really I gotta kind of angle it to get it past and it just popped out again so now I'll try backing it out before the spring and get it in and then back it up and see if that'll work these are a bit of a pain in the ass to put together and I'll tell you that right now right now they're a pain in the ass to put together Because it's not just intuitive. You can't like the other watch mainsprings are a little easier. So this one here, you do this, and then if I back this up, it's got to find the hole, and then I go forward, and there we go. So it's now hooked. I'll just turn it a few times to make sure it's hooked. Yeah, it's hooked. So there we go. It's in the barrel. It's painful, but not that painful. So what I did was I took that the notch on the arbor and I put it ahead of the hole in the mainspring and then, and it's it's curved anyway, it's like a ramp and then I backed it backed it up until that ramp went inside the, the notch on the mainspring so that's the best way to do that and so now I've got the majority of my parts needed now to reassemble this watch so I'm gonna look, I'm gonna take a look at my uh, picture first and make sure that I've um, I've got everything accounted for here when I do my reassembly so I want to make sure the wheels go in the right way right so I've got the wheel picture here the wheel picture and in this case here the I'll put the uh, I think uh, I'm not sure maybe I'll put the pallet fork in right now so it's a little less pain in the butt when I try to get all that together so let's just look at that pallet fork here and I just dipped this the end of this thing here and pretty darn clean but I dipped the end of this in uh, in my on my Rodico there to make sure it was uh, good these stones were clean and they're, 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 they're looking clean so so I'm gonna put the pallet fork into position and that would go I'll, I'll get a little closer for you guys but there we go and I just want to get it in position so that all the other wheels and stuff are not interfering. So, so the pallet fork goes in right here. 
It's got one of those safety pins that I talked about before that goes straight up. Which is a pain in the butt. There we go. It's the pallet fork and then the bridge. And as I said earlier, it's called a bridge because there's two side two screws, one on either side. If it's a if it's single like the balance cock, it's called a cock. So I know you guys are all giggling right now. This is, I think, all the little kids, any little kids that are watchmakers are giggling right now. He said the C word. So that looks like it's down nicely, actually, and I can see the pivot through the other side. And just like I've preached over and over again, never tighten it down completely until you can make sure you have the pivots on both sides. Because it will snap that it'll snap your um, snap the pivot if it's not in place I think my screwdrivers are magnetized just ever so slightly and it's pissing me off so so put one of these in place and not and just tighten it a little bit not a lot and I'm just gonna flip this around and make sure I see the pivot on the other side which I do and then I'm now I'm sure I'm not gonna crush the uh, the pivot. So I'm not as afraid as I normally would be. <laughs> so that's good. That's a good thing. And then I'm going to put the other screw in here. Could be a long video, but hopefully you're appreciating it and you'll watch my videos instead of Netflix because the shares in Netflix just went down. So that screwdriver is magnetized. You see that? So we're going to demagnetize this screwdriver while we're sitting right here, okay? And let me get the ma magnetizer out. Uh, this is a just a cheap Chinese demagnetizer, but it actually doesn't work too bad. I don't use the I use the my other demagnetizer for movements, which is a little bit better. And I think if I just push down and then let it rattle and go up, it should be fine. Little red light goes on. Hold the button down, just let it go for a few seconds, and then move it upward and about a foot and a half away from the demagnetizer while it's still on. And then I will go over to the screw that I have here and see if it still grabs that screw. So there it is there and nothing. So that's completely demagnetized, which is nice. Now it's not going to cause me issues when I try to use it to put the screw inside where the plate is. Because it doesn't, basically, if I can show you again, it's demagnetized. It's not picking up that screw, which is perfect. Perfecto. So I can just put that screw back in the hole now, and it was sort of grabbing the screw and then pulling it out. So I should check all my screwdrivers because they somehow get magnetized. I'm not sure what happens. I think Magneto, the great Magneto, lives down the block from where I am. And so I do this, and then I check the pallet fork to make sure it still moves. It's not tight in any manner. And yeah, I think Magneto lives down the block, and Magneto is uh, causing my magnetism to happen. Or I just have a, <clears throat> a very magnetic personality, which is causing the screwdrivers to get magnetized. What do you think? Doubt it. Department of Doubt it dot com. So let's just start putting the wheels back. So this guy here goes here. This is the escapement wheel that interacts with the. Uh, pallet fork. Actually, before I put that in, just the old before I put that in situation, while I'm here, I might as well put my 9415, Mobius 9415. So this goes on the end of the pallet fork and it allows, it's just, it's like a gel. It just kind of stays on there and it just makes the uh, friction between the, the little shoes, I'll say the feet of the escapement and the pallet fork so it escapes a lot better with this this stuff on it so let's get on it let's get on it what are you going to do if you really don't want to dance so that's that and that's 9415 you got to put that on folks you got to get yourself some 9415 and put that on the pallet fork because if you don't 
there's just a bit too much friction. I've had watch amplitudes improve like tenfold by putting this on, or at least fivefold, something fold. And then I just put this escapement in place here. They're always hard to put in place because the pivots are so small. There we go. You think it would just fall into place, right? And then the next wheel would be the seconds wheel. The hairy arms. Hairy arm dot. And, and this is a hunter movement. So the seconds wheel will be at 90 degrees to where the stem goes in. So that would go in right here, right? I doubt if that's going to just pop in because I'm not using, I'm not looking up close. And I go in, look up close. I'm looking through the spokes of the wheel to find the hole. I'm a hole finder. There we go. There. And then the next wheel would be the f the uh, intermediate wheel, which is the third wheel. Given that the mainspring is the second or the first wheel, then the third wheel is this wheel here, right? And this interacts. This has pinion up. Gotta make sure you get the pinions in the right position, or the damn thing won't work. So this is pinion up. I keep my language clean. Dam's not that bad though. That's like the Hoover Dam, right? All right. So that one's down. And again, doing it under video. I'm a very brave man. So this one's the next one. And I'm looking at this here, and, I'm, and you know what? I see a little tiny bit of corrosion right in here, and I want to attack with my famous device, so let's just do that. This watch was just corrosion central, so I don't like this. The other pinions didn't have corrosion like this, so I'm just going to go around this, around the circle here, and sweep the corrosion between the leaves of the pinion here. Again, I'm going to not try not to breathe in while I'm doing this. Just do it for a few seconds. Stop. Take a breath. Go back. Stop. Take a breath. Go back. I used to scuba dive so I can hold my breath for a long time. That was a long time ago, though, so it doesn't count, right? It's looking a lot better. And I got all these little pieces of fiberglass on my fingers and wear gloves. That's good there. And roll this. I'm gonna puff that out. And then I'm gonna jab then in the, in the erotico to pick up anything that the pinion I'm gonna just basically pick anything up that's left over from not blowing it out. And when I put it to the cleaning machine it's fine if you're just cleaning a normal watch, but this watch was like inundated with corrosion. It was like corrosion central, so and I just throw that brace to brace it on the back side and then pull it straight out again. And then I want to roll the teeth to make sure there's nothing in there. I think my my uh, my erotico is getting dirty today. Pull that pull that out and fold it over so it gets rid of I'm not sure what it does but the dirt sort of goes away so so that's good there. And I'm just going to look in here just to make sure there isn't any leftover stuff that I want to get rid of. Now, there's one little piece there that I want to deal with. Right in there, in this pinion right here. That's good there. This one right here too. It's not really anything in there. It's just 
I'm seeing a little darker color, so I'm attacking it because it's got a darker color. So, which could imply that there's corrosion in there. So let me press that down and press roll this again. Pick up any leftover uh, fiberglass like that. And the pivots on this side, and I'm going to use a bit of pith wood and pith the pivot. Although for the center wheel, it's not that critical that the pivots are pithed for these big watches. They got enough power through the mainspring to get rid of anything that might get in his way. So, and this here, I did some work on the inside of this. I just make sure there's nothing left over in there. I don't think there is any, but. But I also want to take a little, take the chance to put a little tiny bit of oil in there while I'm here. There we go. That might, that'll probably help it a bit. And that is pivot or pinion down. There we go. So now all these gears should be interacting. I press one, the rest of the move. Yeah, that's good. That is fine. That is great. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I just surpassed 5,000 subscribers, folks. Now, I'm not like this dude that has got uh, watch restoration, I think, dot com or something, the watch restoration guy. He does watches more than pocket watches, and he's pretty good, actually. Um, but he's got like, a, he gets 100 and 30,000 views on each one of his videos. It's kind of peeving me off a bit, but but so be it, right? So be it. You know what I forgot for the mainspring, by the way? Forgot to put the friggin' arbor in. <laughs> I think the arbor has to go in first. I'm not sure, actually. Maybe it doesn't. I can't remember. Let's see if it goes in the top. Does it go all the way through? I think it has to go in. Um, actually, I don't know. I might be wrong. I may be right. Do 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 do. I may be crazy. Yeah, maybe this, the arbor doesn't have to go in. I can't remember. Uh, nope, it doesn't. It just sticks out like that. So, which theoretically makes it easier. But I'm just looking at it sideways, like I'm showing you right now, and you can see the pivot sticking out. So that's this would go right in here like this and just stick right in. My hands, I think, are greasy enough that there's no real sweat or anything in there. <laughs> now, getting excited. It's getting close to be able to put stuff together, right? So, so we're going to put the plates on right now. So the first plate I'm going to put on um, is the plate, this plate here. But before I do that, I'm going to peg out the holes just to make sure there's nothing there. And to peg out the holes, you take a piece of pith wood and you grab your favorite don't break into my house knife which is this one here that I use it's a husky husky the toughest name in tools there it is there and you can change the blade on this which is nice and there's the bl there's extra blades I believe on the inside of this maybe uh, maybe not I don't know anyway you just sharpen this like this ever so carefully and I just hold it with my hand like that and I use my thumb to press the back as I sharpen it and that gives me positive control on that like this and like this and when I get to the end part I just barely touch it it's a Zorro move so there we go so that's nice and sharp and now I can peg the holes out And I'm going to peg the holes out from the bottom, as opposed to from the top. They actually look really good, so I'm not sure if this is even required. Start at the biggest hole, which is actually the center wheel, and just do this. And turn it and twist it, and then it's the next wheel. And what happens is the peg wood kind of gets smaller. The, hole, the jewel itself makes the peg wood smaller. And then I peg out the next one. You can't even see me doing this, can you? So I just do this and I peg it out and I gotta get this one, the last one here. And sometimes when you're pegging this out, there's leftover Rodico 
uh, make sure you look you take your finger away and look right through the hole to make sure you've got nothing in the middle of that hole right so and then I take some Rodico and I just tap that lightly to make sure I've got everything there's no residual and I always look at it kind of at an angle to see it shine I look at the jewels at an angle to to make sure I get a good you can see that reflecting there and that means I've got an excellent uh, there's no issue <clears throat> and I'm gonna just go on the top side here for a second and make sure there's nothing leftovers in here at all as well <coughs> oh COVID just kidding now I want to lay this plate down and I'm glad it's not a full plate but I'm still gonna have to do some tapping I know it so so lay the plate down uh, get it all lined up uh, and then push her down and then and I didn't do it properly here but if I look closely I can align the the pivots as close as I can align them before I put the plate in and then just put the plate down like that and now I'm going to be tapping these tapping these with my Benford A1, 21 A1 thing to make sure that the plate um, is it falls down into position without a problem. So, and to do that, you just you got to pick it up. You can't do it. Uh, you can't do it while you're filming. You just have to tap it around until all the they all find their home, right? Sometimes you can actually twist, turn the uh, movement, and for some reason they just fall into place. So. There we go. That's that one there. And you see how that went down? I'm doing this under camera. So that's that's one, two, and then I've got this one here is also in place. So the only last thing is the escapement. So I often, just so I don't lose the darn position of everything, I'll take my, uh, my one screw, right, just one screw, and very lightly put that screw in place, right? And this sort of ensures that everything doesn't pop out of place after. If I don't do this, then uh, I end up having everything pop out of place, which just pisses me off. So but the better thing to do is to take one screw, put it down like that, pick the right screwdriver. I don't think I get the right screwdriver, but I'm going to use this one anyway. And then just put that in place but super lightly right so I bring it down like this but I don't tighten it all the way just kind of leave it floating like this and now I can go over to that escapement with my tweaker I'll call it my tweaker I'll show you what I'm doing here but again camera angles are not the greatest for this I'll look at all the pivots so I got this these ones are all showing through so it's just this one here and I look at the angle of the wheel on the bottom to see if I've if it's at an angle of any type and usually it's just a matter of touching it for a second and it will fall in place I'm just moving it around right now and sometimes it the, the plate will just drop down and other times you have to fool with it for a little while now if I bring it up to my head I can see where the pivot is with relations with respect to the hole and it's not as bad to to find home I think it's in yeah so it's in now and I can tell because the plate if you look here the plate is, is there's no gap here the plates touching without a gap which means that pivot found home and I look at the pivots on the top and I see the little pivot heads on each top and now I now I've got to take another screw and firm this up right make sure I've, I've got this down so that it all doesn't jump out and before I tighten it again I will check I will check the other side before I tighten it just to make sure I've got no rogue rogue uh, screw issues or sorry rogue pivots that aren't in place 
Um, and I'm going to get the right screwdriver here, I think. I think I'm three over, maybe. And then screw, see if I can screw this plate down here nice and carefully. And I'll tighten it just a little bit. And I'll tighten this one. This one, yeah, this is flat down as well, so I can tighten this one a bit. So they're both tight now. And now if I take the wheel and I just move the wheel, the question is, do I see the pallet fork move? And I do. So I just touch that like this and you probably should use a uh, piece of pegwood, but this isn't too bad. So I just do that and I can see the pallet fork rock back and forth, which means I've got positive contact through there and through the mainspring as well. So now I can put the mainspring barrel, uh, the bridge on for the mainspring barrel. I didn't haven't tightened everything down yet. So there's the bridge, right? Now here, you remember I put some oil on the top there, so that should transfer over. Let me have a look here and uh, let me have a look how far that goes over. Yeah, that should transfer over nicely. Um, I, I tell you what, I'm just going to put another little dab of oil in there. So it's the thickest oil I use for this. Um, I can't remember the number of it. I think it's uh, something five. Just put a little bit in here to start off with. I'm going to clean this up just a bit before I put that oil in. My thumb hurts. I know I got. I think I got arthritis in my thumb. Arthritis. Good old arthritis. I think that comes with age. If you don't do anything in your life, you'll never get any problems. <laughs> so it's basically, you just sit on your ass all day long and you don't bother challenging yourself. You will not have any problems with your knees or anything. So, but you won't have any fond memories of all the times you tried to out jump your buddy. A little bit of oil here. Like that. And then I'm going to put some oil through the center wheel. Like this. And this jewel here. I can use the heavier oils um, for this, and then when I get to the end here, I'll use a much lighter, lighter oil. I'll show you what those oils are in a second, but when I get to the end here, and I like to use a lighter oil for the escapement. There we go. And a little tiny bit of oil for the pallet for and the jury's out on whether you need to oil it or not by the way because there's all kinds of different schools of thought on that so if you want to argue with your friends about whether you should oil the pallet fork bridge jewel then have that argument for by all means um, now before I put this in place I'm going to oil the click spring as well so and again, on this here, I'll just use a, a medium oil. I'll call them medium light, heavy light. Medium. But I'll just put a little bit of oil right there. So as that contacts the click spring, contacts the ratchet, I don't have ratchet, I don't have problems. Right, right, the ratchet. <clears throat> Talking with my golf voice today. So now, I'm looking at all my what's all the parts that are left over. There's quite a few left over. I don't remember what this part's for. <laughs> it's never good. Put the whole watch together and I miss this part. I may actually be missing this part. I better watch it because I think that's the part that goes, that actually is part of the ratchet. If I look at this part closely, where the hell does that go? Hopefully it's not, it doesn't go in the wheel here, so that's good. It's, uh, let me see, let me think. Because it looks like a ratchet wheel. Oh my god. Hopefully I don't have to take all this apart. That happens. Um, let me think. Let me think. It might be on the other side, actually. And it goes all the way through. 
it's definitely not part of this which is good but it might have to be part of something else so I'm going to have to have a look and see where that goes because all the rest of it looks like it's fine I recognize everything else just that little tiny wheel so um, I'm praying right now folks I hope like if it goes over here or over there or where the hell does this wheel go all right, I'm going to pause for a second, see if I can find that out. So I still don't know where that wheel goes, but I think it's the interface between the crown and the other wheel to, for winding. So I'm just going to put this in place and go to the other side and see if there's a chance, by some small chance, that I can install that on the other side. So otherwise i got to strip this down and take it all apart again to install that properly. But... I won't tape that because it's just not worth taping. But there's always that, what the heck is this part for? So, and it's just like I said, every keyless move, every keyless part of a pocket watch for different brands are all different. So, and there's no manuals that I'm looking at to do this work, so, which means I've sometimes will have to redo something. You kind of get used to that. Your patience is usually honed after years of doing this that you know that something might screw up so so let me look at this on the other from the other side and do a little bit investigatory look at this from this side because I think that I think that this this wheel I think goes under this screw right there because that would kind of make sense um, because it would interface with this and the other thing so if I just take that apart, um, I don't want to. I don't want to mar my beautiful face here, so I'm going to throw this down. Throw down the gauntlet. Throw this down and put that on top. I could put that on my rubber pad as well, right? Yeah, maybe I should do that. Maybe bury your own rubber pad. Let's do that, folks. It's rubber pad time. Alrighty then. Let's see where this friggin' gear goes. <laughs> Damn it. I wish I would have remembered where that was. So, just checking my screwdriver to make sure it's the right one. I gotta take this off, and I'm hoping that the other side doesn't disappear on me. So, just gonna very carefully remove this, like so, and then. And I think that the the screw. It's got to go on that wheel. Let me have a look at this. If I do this. I throw this on, then it's interfacing with, it basically goes down like that, and it interfaces with this, the crown wheel, and I don't believe this is beveled, I'll have a look at it and make sure there's no beveling. Is there beveling? You gotta look for beveling. No, there's no beveling, and the wheel's pretty much consistent on both sides, so this should go right there, like that. And then and there's, a, there's even a gap for it, so I should have known, right? Should have known ahead of time. So then this goes on like this, like that, and Mr. 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 Pegwood has to be in here because I'll screw this up. But this goes in like that, and then I tighten this up. And a different screwdriver here. I don't like the way this one is gripping that screw. Yeah, this is not gripping it the way I'd want it to grip it. So I'm not sure if I'm lined up or not. So I've got to take this wheel here and then push that into place and then move this over and make sure that's in place. It's sort of in place there, but I don't like the way it's gripping it from the other side because there's a bit of a 
a gap. So I'm going to look at that from the inside and see what that gap is and figure that out. All right, I figured it out. I had to push that that part. If I go really close, can you see that? So there's a part that's I'm trying to use a mirror right there with that hole in it, and that part needed to be pushed inward so that the screw could catch on it, and then I could tighten that screw because that's what's holding that wheel in place. So I'm just loosen it up and then tighten it again. And, uh, That's good there. Now I'm going to look underneath here and then touch that gear and then move it. And it's moving. So we got no problem there. So there's a gear in there and that's the gear that interacts with the uh, with the uh, minute gear. And I think I can slide that in because I think I slid it out the other way. So keep away from the second pinion though, folks, because that will ruin your day. So I think I slid this in before, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. And then I put a little oil on that, and I just have to put the. Uh, that's not enough oil. I just have to put the. The cannon pinion back on. It's good there, and then the cannon pinion, Mr. Cannon pinion. Uh, I want to put that back on right now. I could. Um, just to get that in place because I could do the winding mechanisms and stuff first but I'm just going to get this back on see if it just goes straight down and again I've got different techniques for putting the cannon pinion sometimes they're loose enough that I can just use my tweezers and push straight down but this one seems like it's not too bad um, and then other times they're a pain in the ass so here there's it's not there's a leaf or a You gotta make sure that the wheel here is not interfering with the cannon pinions that push it down. That's good there, and now it's gotta go all the way down. Now, in this case here, you can use to get that in place. Instead of using your tweezers and screwing things up, I recommend, highly recommend, uh, grabbing your staking set and finding a stake that fits nicely over the top of that um, like this and let's see if this stake's big enough uh, now it's a bit so this here is a, um, no it's good and just using the stake to push it down so so now I push that straight down but the stake from the staking set gives me more uh, just distributes the pressure around the leaves of the cannon pinion so you don't have the chance of breaking the cannon pinion so I recommend using a stake from your staking set to do that job um, or you could get in trouble and we don't want you to get in trouble out there and watch land so I think I'm frozen yeah I was actually frozen for a second all right so that cannon pinions down now and so is that uh, seconds wheel now that prob it's likely gonna fall out on me when I turn it upside down yeah, there we go which is fine. I just wanted to make sure the cannon pinion was in, down in the right position and we'll fix that later. Now I can't use my spongy pad because I put my cannon pinion down. But I got my Myers number 58 movement holder. And I can just put that in place. And now I can just grab stuff and put it, put it on, put it in. So first thing I got to put in place is this wheel here. And this, this wheel rides around the edge of this wheel here, so it's steel on steel. So given that it's steel on steel, I will, I will put a bit of lube on there. And just a bit, right? And again, it'll just ride around. I'm not too worried about it, so I'll just put it on the edges here. And that'll help that. And I can see the... Uh, this wheel coming up here that I've already lubed, I believe. I think I did. And that's going to turn that wheel, which is going to turn the ratchet wheel. So, just put that on top. There's a screw here that helps you align that second part of the wheel, right? So you throw that in like that. 
and then there's a this here has got a screw a little hole and you just have to line that little hole up with with that so I'm just gonna rotate it on my mat a bit and see if I can find the the hole so there it is there there's the hole and that is probably close enough use my finger and then just find that just rotate it a bit with your finger and find out where it sits and then I just can take this in here and I think as I said in my other video that usually it's the opposite direction that this turns but in this case here it's I think it's righty tighty because I was and then I just back the screw off just a bit before you turn it and then tighten it up and don't tighten it so the head falls off and then see how this moves so we're good we're good and then the other then I have to put in this wheel here and this should be a problem I just have to move the uh, click spring out of the way and it should go in without a problem let's move that out of the way a bit and then turn that just a bit come on turn it come on and it's almost there and then put this click spring down and then the screw for this is where there it is don't lose your screws otherwise you got to go screw hunting which I've done many times so and uh, in this case here you're also I'm gonna wipe this down after to get rid of any of my fingerprints but uh, here you're just screwing this in like that and then this should wind the watch as well right like that now let's just put some pressure on the watch now I should be able to touch the pallet fork and it should snap back and forth so let's do the old pallet fork test here and see if this works look at that thing of beauty that tells me that there's power going from one side to the other side so and this movement looks <laughs> so much nicer than it did before wow that's what happens when you take your time and I gotta tighten these screws now because I uh, didn't tighten them before so I'm sure the owner can go with the cloth and, mm -hmm. and make sure that they're, it's even more polished who knows so let me tighten these screws because these were not tightened before and I don't want this watch to uh, fall apart on me all the pivots were in place there shouldn't be any issue here at all and then the last one here now once again I'm going to check to see if I didn't screw anything up here this should just snap back and forth there we go that's snapping back and forth and I'm pretty sure I tightened the, uh, the uh, pallet fork bridge so there's no issue there at all so it's looking looking a lot better than it did before ladies and gentlemen and so that's that's together now and now I need I'm gonna leave the second the uh, minute wheel out I'm not gonna bother putting that back right now and I'm gonna leave the uh, uh, the the uh, hour wheel out which goes over the minute wheel can opinions in already um, but I've got to do a little bit of work on the um, on the balance so let's do that right now I'm just trying to get access to the cap jewel on the balance by loosening up the uh, the um, loosening up the screws on the top and this for me will minimize the amount of um, work I've got to do to put this balance back together and the chance of fouling the hairspring which is which happens on the balances from time to time but I don't want that to happen on anything I'm working on so, so I'm looking at this particular movement and I'm just seeing where the uh, where this capsule alignment might be Just make a small little mark that no one will ever see on this side and I'm trying to pull the uh, pull the cap jewel up if I can't I'm taking the stripping the balance down completely and I'll do it that way 
which I may end up having to do anyway. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere. So, so, so a needle pulling thread. I'm just looking how the stud goes into this watch here. It goes in from this side here, so I'm going to have to remove the stud from this side here. Just let that spring fall. I'm trying to be super careful here because if your screwdriver slips, there's a, a very there's a chance that you're going to hit the hairspring. You do not want to do that. So I'm trying to be as careful as possible and having 100% control over the screwdriver when I loosen this screw that's holding the stud in. And now I should just be able to push that stud straight down to get rid of that, right? It's sticking up pretty high too, so that's gone. And I should be able to just grab that balance and take that off. There we go, that's the balance cock I just took off. And now I am going to get that jewel out somehow and have a look at this here. I think it looks pretty good, but I can push that jewel out, I think, with uh, <coughs> pretty much any tool. But if I use a balance of stake, I can pop that jewel out of there and uh, clean it and then put it back in. That's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, gonna do. So I've taken the screws out already. And while I'm doing that, I got, I'm running out of room for parts here because I'm having to keep moving stuff to get to my staking set, which I don't like to do. So, so there. So I'm going to grab a stake that might be the appropriate size. I could push this out using a peg wood, but so I want it to be a little bit bigger than this. So I want the stake to be probably this size here. Uh, let me see. Uh, this size here might do. I'm just grabbing at stakes, folks. Yeah, this size protects the jewel on this side, and I should be able to just push that out. So to get that out, you need to have, you need to basically get your, one of these blocks here, and you push that. I usually push it out, eh? so you put that over a hole of the appropriate size. Not too big, not too small, right? And, and then just make sure you keep an eye on those regulator arms too, because I'm going to actually brush those down too after. But I want to make sure there's support for this as I push down on it, so. There we go. Just snap that thing out and then you've got your the jewels that just fell down to the the uh, the base here. So now I can take these and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm a pretty cool dude. I'm going to throw these into here with a little lighter fluid. And just let them rinse for a while. Because they probably deserve it. Now I got I got this lighter, this cloth here that that was meant to save the, you know, the potential of a balance going in here. But now I get to put these little jewels down in there and I'm going to take some fluid of lighterness and then I think I've got a little bit left in this can and then just fill that up like that and then let that sit for a few minutes. There's no shellac on these jewels, so you don't have to worry about that issue. Um, I've been working on this pretty much all morning, right? So it's going to be a long video. Then I take a brush like this and I attack it with the brush to just make sure that the jewel, the uh, it all gets off somehow, right? So. Get down to it, do 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 do. Get down to it, do 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 do. What you gonna do if you don't want to dance I'm on the floor? So that's that there. And I get a little watch paper. Take that brush, put it aside. A little bit of watch paper again. I have to fix the dishwasher today, so 
I don't know how to fix a dishwasher, but by the time I'm finished, it's either going to be fixed or we're going to have a new dishwasher. This one is 25 years old, so if you think I should replace a dishwasher, let me know. So, so I'm putting this uh, these jewels on watch paper and just let them dry for now. And I'm going to reuse the lighter fluid I have here because I want to throw my... Let me see if I can find another... Uh, where is that? Where is it? Where is it? I'm looking for the cap of a bottle. Oh, there it is. Oh my god. There it is right here. I can use this or I can actually use my dunker tank. Oh no, the dunker tank's busy with another watch, so I can't use the dunker tank. And I don't think this will fit inside of here. I don't think so. That's just, just too small. So, gonna have to put it in here. So I'll just throw this down here for now to protect the, uh, the pivot on the end. And I'm gonna drown this balance with lighter fluid. So, so there you go. Pour it on the top and drown it on the other side. I wish I wouldn't have had to use so much lighter fluid because not that it's expensive, but just figured I didn't have to use that much this time. I'm drowning this up and just drown that balance. And the lighter fluid does not uh, get affected by uh, or the shellac does not get affected by the lighter fluid, so it's perfect for doing this kind of stuff. And then you want to, you don't want to get in there with screwdrivers or anything, you want to agitate it with air. So um, just, just be careful you don't splash this all over the place, so you got to agitate it very carefully. Like that. And, and uh, also the um, this will clean a lot of crap off the balance. It just does. I'm not sure why, but it does. I wouldn't put a balance into a uh, into an ultrasonic cleaning machine either. I think that's a little bit too dangerous. I think the vibrations could cause the pivots to snap or could uh, cause the uh, impulse jewel to loosen up. So. So you just need to do this, um, and then I'm just going to leave it for about five minutes just to soak to make sure it gets as much of the stuff off as possible. Agitating it. All right. So that's sat on that long enough, I think. So I'm just going to take this uh, take this balance. I won't use this, I don't think, but I'm going to use this this one here, and I'm going to. Just rest that balance on the, um, just take that off, um, and I want to rest it on here. It's going to probably take my faux leather here and get it all wet, but I don't care. i got to throw this outside because I don't think I can re reuse this, but I can take my little jobby doohickey out of it and let it dry. Well, it gets pretty wet though, but the lighter fluid evaporates almost immediately, so doesn't stay wet long. So I'm going to take this and throw it in the snow. And then I can also use my puffer to accelerate the drying of this. <clears throat> but i got to be careful not to tangle up the hairspring while I'm doing that. So, so you can take your, get this out of the way, and I want to put that lighter fluid next to anything that's going to make it go boom. So, so I'm just going to take my tweezers and very carefully grab the stud for this. And lift it up and while I have that lifted up I'm going to use my puffer here to dry this out. Now I'm looking at this really closely so I don't for some reason I don't want to uh, do any like maim the hairspring in any way so I'm holding this this stud on the end of the hairspring very lightly to get my uh, puffer in there to puff this nicely. And why I'm doing this is I was concerned that if you puff it without doing this, you can tangle up the hairspring. So this is a, probably the preferred method of drying this out. You can also just let it sit, and over time it'll dry. So I may do, go down for lunch and then come back after, and it'll be dry. So, but this gets rid of a lot of the uh, lighter fluid that was in there. I can stretch it out just a bit, but not too much. And there we go. And that's just helping everything evaporate. 
and the hairspring will come out super clean this way. It's just amazing how clean it comes out. I've done this quite a few times and I'm always amazed. I look under my stereo microscope at the hairspring and I'm like, holy crap, there's nothing left on it. So, And I'll likely have to demagnetize this thing, but I'm going to wait till I put it back together in, in the watch and see if it works. So, But I'm going to go down and have some eggs. Eggs, man. There, see how that's nicely put together and there's no... I'm looking at the, the strands and the hairspring and nothing is stuck stuck together if you look at that hairspring. It's a thing of beauty. So that's really nice. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Alright, just before I depart for some food, I'm going to put the uh, jewels back into the uh, balance cock. So. And the way you do this, you really got to keep an eye out for those regulator pins. So I've got my cap jewel here and then this jewel here. So I've got the two jewels of concern. The jewels of concern. Sounds like a movie. So when you put your uh, this down, look out for your regulator pins. Now actually before I do that, again, because of this corrosion that this watch is inundated with, um, it looks like it might have gotten wet or something, or maybe it's just old. So I can see that there's the regulator pins have got a little bit of crap on them too. So I'm just going to very carefully brush these regulator pins with this the world's most amazing Bergeron Bergeron number 6240. Get one of these. And this just is fiberglass. So, and I just want to brush that to get any corrosion off those regulator pins because I gotta have to slide that hairspring in after right so, so that looks pretty good there no crap in between them and these little the threads on these or the individual hairs here are so fine they get into everything so there's no issue so now I just take this jewel here that I have and I find a hole like this to stick that the regulator arms through and I just have to make sure I put this in the right direction. So throw that down here. And that should just fall in and not cause me too much, too many problems. Come on. There we go. Now I take a piece of, of peg wood, watch my regulator pins, and then push down on this. Like that. And once I have it down in position like that, you turn it over and look on the edge just to make sure that it has fallen completely in place and you don't have a gap. Because that gap will screw you with side shake. And so I put a little side pressure on it and just avoid putting too much pressure on that jewel. That's why I use pegwood. And now this one here, I recall I put the slightest little mark on it. And if I could remember where the mark was, we'd be all good, wouldn't we? I think it was probably on this side here, but I still have to put... Yeah, I think that's where the mark is. Let me look again at an angle. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to look up close. I'll be back in a second. Now, I've rubbed the cap jewel with the back end of the pegwood, too. Because even though you throw it in lighter fluid and clean it, um, there's always some little gum left over. But when I look at it, I'm having a hard time determining whether I have the right side or not. So um, I look at it the other way. Just flip it around here. Um, I was hoping I could see a little tiny mark, but I can't. So I'm just going to have to try to put it in, and hopefully it's concentric concentric so got to get the oil out first because if you don't oil it then why are you doing this this is what they say don't oil it then why are you doing it so again I use 9010 on this just get some 9010 and you don't need a ton of it but you gotta have enough so get some 9010 and put it on the cap jewel put the right side of it I think it is Yeah, that's perfect. So that's on the cap jewel. You don't want too much on there. 
just enough and I'm just going to take a chance here and see if I got the right side the correct side all right make sure that's over the uh, I dropped that down right now and it's holding on to it pretty good. Looks not too bad. Department of Nudge. And now I just have to push down on this. Make sure the regular pins are over the hole. And that looks pretty darn good right there. Yeah. I think I nailed it, folks. I think I nailed it. So if you look at that, that is in place nicely. I got close up of my fingers. It's pretty disgusting, but this camera is amazing. So there we go. Now I just have to grab these screws, right, and put them back in place. I got to get this camera out of the way a bit because I keep hitting my head on it. And, um, and I made sure I had the screws on the right way. So bottom here, this is the bottom screw. And let me just screw that in. And again, it should be tight, but not like, not super tight, because you want the next guy that's uh, cleaning this watch to not have to just, you know, skin his arm trying to get it tight, too tight. If it gets too tight, his fingers will come off or something. Oh, my knee now hurts again. Damn it. Stupid knee. I'm going to remove the knee. So there we go. That's it. Done. Cleaned. And the the uh, balance is also cleaned. And I'm going to put that on using my stereo microscope to make sure it's lined up and I get that thing in there. But first, I'm going to go have lunch. I'll be right back. All right. I am back. I guess you're wondering what the heck this thing is, eh? If you guess what it is, you get nothing. All right, the next step in this adventure is to put the watch back together and put the balance back on top of the balance cock and then put it under the watch and see if we got some ticking. Got some ticking. So I'm going to use my, my, my uh, microscope to do that because I've got a technique that I think is pretty cool. And what I do, just to, sh just to let you know, is I take, and I just need to replace this Rodico. It's so freaking dirty. But I take some Rodico. Let me just stretch this stuff out so the clean stuff's on the inside. All right, take some Rodico like this, right? And then I build a ramp. I build me a ramp. So, and my ramp is basically like a wedge, like this. I build a ramp. And I find this is the best method so far. So the ramp is pretty steep. I'd say the ramp is about 70 degrees. 70 degrees! So it's sort of like, like that. Let me just push that ramp in a bit more. It's like this. Then I take my balance in all of its glory. And I look at where that stud will hang on to that balance because I want that stud to be in the upward position. And I look at where the arms are here to, to attach it. So it's on the other side. So, so what I need to do is take this balance then, and I want to hang it this way. So it's going to be hung like that, like this. I push it down, and there's no problem pushing that down. And then I take the stud like this, and I and it basically using my stereo mic. I might be able to do it without the microscope right now, but but I do it. I, what I do is I push this the stud with the hairspring onto the uh, onto the movement like this, right? And I use a screwdriver from the bottom and I push it up. But I usually hold this thingamajobby doohickey with a pin vise, not a pin vise, one of these old pin vises like this. So I grab this on its edge, right, so it's not interfering with anything. Very carefully grab that. See if I can grab this. It's not grabbing. 
I need a bigger one, I think. Um, let me see. I'm going to want it to say, is this one going to do better? I don't know if that'll do better. It might do better, yeah. So I grab this on its edge. Like this. I keep telling you I'm going to grab it on its edge and it ain't happening. It ain't happening, folks. The mouth just won't open up wide enough. So I'm going to have to hold it with my fingers this time because the mouth's not opening up wide enough. If I go to the microscope and it allows me, it affords me the ability to to put it on like this. But now the problem I see I'm going to have is to screw this in because the screw goes from the other side. So I might have to hold it differently this time because the screw does go from the other side. So this could be trickier. This could be a lot trickier because the, this allows you kind of to control the... Uh, hairspring going into the collet like that and it also affords you the, the ability to watch the uh, hairspring as you're doing this so so I do it under a microscope only because it's easier for you you're getting it nice and close uh, you can probably do it that way with like uh, some pretty heavy glasses on so I'll be right back well I was able to get it on so now we're going to see if I can uh, use this tool to do this all right, this watch has yet another problem. <clears throat> the problem is is that the upper pivot is slightly bent. So and not, you're not going to be able to see that without a microscope, but it's slightly bent. And I likely could straighten this out with a J-cut tool, so I'm going to try doing that. Alrighty then, kind of a bad angle here for you to look at for this J-cut tool work, but uh, I'm going to film this anyway. <clears throat> I got another tool that's used for straightening pivots, but I don't trust it because uh, I used it once before and it snapped the pivot and it, and it pissed me off. So so the J-cut seems to be a pretty good tool. I usually put a piece of uh, watch paper in here before I slip this down. And it kind of it actually catches the uh, part if you screw up. So And this pivot... I'm going to look at putting it into a 12 or something on the top here and just rolling it to see if it'll work. Um, and I, I'm going to use, um, instead of using the bow, which I normally use, I'm going to use a badge, a, uh, a bad security badge hook like that. So, because that, that will work too. And I usually just put that down here and then string it over the top. And I'm able to spin this with the security badge hook. So. So that works fairly well. I want to get this friggin' thing out of the way though. I need a better bench vise, by the way. So if you want to send me a bench vise, I'll take it. <laughs> so there you go. So anyway, I'm just going to move this out of the way and then see if I can tighten this up just a bit. There we go. That's not bad. And now i got to get deep and dirty on this because uh, I usually use my Made in China times a whole lot of extra distance uh, thingamajabby do hickey thing so I may move this camera over and everything just to show you what I'm doing because uh, it is interesting so let's do let's do that and reset all right so my mat is way up in the air right now so so the first thing you get to do is put the balance I think I can use leave the hairspring on for this um, I've done this before with the hairspring on and it worked fine um, it's not it's trick. It's a bit tricky. So I get find the right number, and I use 12 here because I probably don't need to use more for this particular job. And and I want to be able to back this off just a bit to put this in place. So I'm going to get close here and rest this pivot. Yeah, you know what? That hairspring is going to spin around and be in the way. So. I don't think I will be able to use it like that. So stand by. So we're going to pop this hairspring off here. Um, and I want to make sure I know where it goes. So I've got, I'm going to put it in one of these holes here. Should be fine. Um, and I don't want to move around too much, but I want to make sure I mark where that stud is. Because if I don't, it'll end up being in the wrong place when I put it back. So. I got a little red marker here, and and I'll just put a little mark. It looks like somebody's already marked it, but I'll just put a little mark right there. So it's between the two 
these two screws here, the, the uh, weights. So I'm just going to go like that. So it's just the world's smallest mark. Um, I'm hoping that mark doesn't go away, which it shouldn't, but I just use a marker to do that. And then I need a couple of screwdrivers to remove this. So I'm going to take my, my, where's my white screwdriver? I want my white and my yellow, maybe? White and yellow? That should do, right? So that's not white. Where's my white screwdriver, folks? It's around somewhere. Oh, it's on the bench. It's on the, under the microscope. So I want my white and yellow. And all I want to do is, hopefully there's not, this isn't glued on or some stupid thing like that, right? It looks like it's riveted of some sort, so which might prevent me from doing this. Let me have a look, closer look at this. Oh, no, it's fine. It's me. I'm dreaming. So I want to take this off. you got to be super careful doing this. I usually like entering it from the underneath the uh, hairspring, like that, and then the other side, same thing, and then I just twist, twist this at an angle ever so slightly. And I'm pushing with downward pressure the whole time, and that way, when it slips like it just did, it's not going to slip into the hairspring. But this could be tricky as heck, this one. I can sense it's not going to be easy. Oh, there we go. Pressure downward. There we go. So the hairspring is now off. Now we can go back to the J-Cut tool. Put that out of the way. And put the screwdrivers out of the way. And I want to go back to the J-Cut tool now. So I heard somebody say that they use a J-Cut tool at least once a week. This is kind of funny that uh, someone would say that. I think I'm looking at the depth of this as well. So you got to put one end here and, and there, and then the other end goes, basically sits on the other side. But I will look across the top to see if that pivot actually shows up on the other side. Oh, I dropped it, and I don't want to ruin it, so... So I'm going to switch this over for a 9, I think, because I think it's a bit too shallow, or too deep, or something. So it's at a 12. It's uh, hard to say, actually. So I'll leave it at 12. And stuff that in there, like this. Yeah, I'm going to turn this around a bit because I, the positioning is kind of sucking for me right now. So it may be great for you, but it's no good for me. So I've got to do that. So this thing is going to be a lot closer in once I uh, get that in there. But I'm not sure about this end piece, whether the uh, pivot is too small for that end piece. So I'm going to have to look at my J-Cot tool again and make sure i got the right end piece in here. Well, it turns out there's only one end piece, so... Yeah, that pivot's just ever so slightly bent. So it doesn't stay in well unless you're actually doing it, like uh, with your burnisher, so... So that's going to sit like that, and I will tighten this up here. And then the... Um, the teeth, the forks, will go in, and I'll just make sure they're out of the way here. But they'll go in, and it seems they seem to always rotate to an area they don't even want them to be. So, there, that should do. So that'll spin it. I don't think I need to put the fork, the uh, shaft in between the forks this time. So that's pretty much the setup there. Now I want to make sure I put a little tiny bit of oil in there too, because I don't like the uh, J-Cut tool spinning like this without having oil. So I'm just going to throw some oil on there. And I'll remove this later, but I need a little tiny bit of oil on here.
do it without making everything fall apart and that's better. Also I want to put a little bit of oil right where the um, where I'm going to use the burnisher. So hoping this works because the heat and friction should help me here. Let's keep that right like that. Alright now I'm going to go grab my burnisher. So this is a Valorobe Valorobe file and burnisher. One side's a burnisher, the other side's a file. So it's a Valorobe. Valorobe. So there it is underneath there. And the burnisher has got one edge of it that's rounded. So I want to use the rounded edge here. And I want to go this way with the rounded edge on that while I'm spinning this. So, so I'm going to, um, I've already put oil in there. I'm just going to use this thing here, this uh, ID spool to drive the uh, to drive the J-cut. Just put that up like that and then around. And I'm going to have the burnisher down when I do this because I don't want this to move at all. So, so let me just put the burnisher down on the pivot very carefully. And then move my thing here. Now I should be able to spin this And just make sure it's catching. Yeah, it's catching. I'm looking down at my Val robe thing and I make sure that that's... And check and make sure it's catching again. What that should do is burnish that pivot. I'm not moving the burnisher a lot because I really want to just straighten the pivot out. Let me have a look at that now. I'm going to have a look at that pivot now and see if it's straight very carefully I want to remove this uh, this here so I'm going to grab it on the other side just so it doesn't fling on me and then take the tension off right and then I can let it go and then I want to look at that pivot now if the pivot still is if it's still not good ungood then I'm going to just reduce the size of my burnisher. So let me have a look at that and see if I've got the same situation. And I'll be back. So I think it's still bent a little and I gotta go to a smaller size on this side. So I'll pull this out like that and it was on 12. So if I go to say let's say 10 that, that might give me more stress or pressure on the end of the pivot, right? Which is gonna help with this situation. So same thing, grab this, um, I want to grab this, I want to put this in place first, right? Doesn't take much to make this move, by the way. And then I'm going to put the fork in like that. It doesn't have to be too deep; it just has to be in place, sort of like that. And now I've got the burnisher again. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on that burnisher just so it's a. It helps me with this. So I just took my oiler and I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the end here. Like that. And I'm using the rounded, like I said, the corner that's rounded to do this because I I don't want to uh, basically I don't want to use the other end. So so I gotta get the, uh, the string I had before right in place. So I'm gonna just do that. Put this in place, make sure it's turned around the other way. 
turn around the other way like that and go up around the edge and now I want to have that burnisher down before I put the string on or the pivot's going to fly out of that gap so I just put it down like that and then put the string on and now I can move that string back and forth I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on here now this time because I want this to straighten up to see if it's yeah it's still touching it which is good but I want it to straighten up but I don't want to take too much material off that pivot because it'll snap Geez, you know, I think I gotta go down one more. One more. Alright, this is my last shot. I'm really trying to avoid having to replace the balance staff, that's all. So I'm just seeing if it's just a slight bend in that pivot. So if I can straighten that up, all good. Well, you know what? I haven't got my my fork, my teeth in there yet. There we go. And now it's over the top. This is tricky work, man. Tricky work. All right. Pivot is in place. And I've got contact. So. I'm rocking it just to see if I can get into that pivot nicely. So it's rounding it. All right, that's enough. Let me check. If this ain't working, then there's a plan B or C. Let me have a look at that. I think I need to back this off just a bit. And then I can pull this out and have a look at it. Mm, it's a lot better. Let me have a look. It looks pretty good. Pretty good. <sighs> pretty good. Mm, it's not too bad. I think we're good, folks. I think we are good. Yep. Let's go for broke. All right. The um, <clears throat> end result is the pivot is broken. So this thing was bent. I thought it was straight enough, um, but it was bent enough for me to not be able to uh, straighten that up so I'm a little bit pissed off that that's broken but that is life so the uh, best thing I could do now is measure the end of the other pivot uh, because I'm gonna have to make another balance staff tomorrow so that's tomorrow I'm gonna make two balance staffs and I will put that in a separate video before I reassemble so and I will basically pop this out well, let's just maybe do this right now, but I need to get rid of this, uh, take this balance staff out and measure the pivot size so I can make a new balance staff. So that was bent. I was hoping I could straighten it out, but no way. The thing just snapped. Straightening out a pivot is almost impossible. I used this tool here, which I've used before, which successfully breaks the pivot. <laughs> so it, uh, it was bent, though. There's no way I could have straightened that thing out. So there it is there. This tool I thought would be good. I tried using it. And uh, once that pivot is bent, uh, 
then straightening it is almost impossible, especially because they're so damn small. So I'm going to stop the video now and we'll start the uh, next phase later. And I've got it all containerized and um, ready for uh, tomorrow's work. I'm not going to do that today because I'm pretty pooped and you don't want to be making balance staffs when you're tired. So it's been a long day already. <laughs>